Tom, you unmuted. And so now we're recording. Hey, Thomas Cox here, and our presiding officer today uh, is a member of our board. It's Justin Blaney. Justin, why don't you open up the meeting for us, please? Hi, everyone. Well, welcome to the meeting. This is the speaker series. We've got a great lineup for you today. And um, Tom, as you uh, graciously opened up us uh, with the meeting here, you're going to be master of ceremonies. Yes, sir. So um, I am one of the newest board members here in the Pacific Northwest and uh, been getting my feet wet, trying to dive in and help us build some relationships with the University of Washington, where we are actually going to try to match up members of IMC uh, with students, graduate students and undergrads, and help them build relationships, whether it's through mentoring or hiring uh, these, these young consultants for jobs or, you know, using them on your projects. So we hope to have more news on that soon. Uh, Frank Coker, longtime member, and I have a meeting with them tomorrow, so we'll be updating everybody as that kind of rolls out, but hope to have some cool opportunities there. Uh, but I'm pleased to uh, meet you all, and I got a fun time meeting of six or seven of you in the breakout room. I'd love to know the rest of you better as we continue to uh, move forward together in the IMC. So thank you very much, Tom. I'm going to pass it back to you. Thank and, you, Justin. Uh, let's let's get going with the meeting. Outstanding. Justin, thank you for your board service. Really appreciate that very, very much. My pleasure. Uh, I want to ask John Anderson real quickly. John, do we have any new members to the, to the organization other than one of our two speakers? Because I know one of our two speakers has joined us, but I'll tell us about that when I introduce her. Joshua is a new member from Pasco, Washington. Ah, I don't know whether, pa whether he's on the call today. I'm hopeful that he is. Joshua Bulky? I'm yeah. here. Behold. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Wonderful. And John, can you give us a thumbnail on Joshua? Well, he's got a 15 year history as a loan officer for banks. And then he went into business uh, in a family business. And now he has his own fractional CFO practice. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Very nice. So, uh, and, and, then, and then another new member is uh, Brenda. Uh, Brenda Comey, uh, I don't know whether Brenda's on the call today, but Brenda is another new member. And, and then Jeff Mays joined uh, right at the end of December. So he's technically a new member also. New enough. New enough. To deserve and, an honorable mention. And, and today is the kickoff of what we hope will become a, an intellectual property support group to have yes. for all of our members who wish to really work on their IP. And we'd like to kick this IP support group off with a group that focuses on doing courses and classes. Outstanding. So, thank you, Tom, for bringing these wonderful speakers into us today. Uh, well, you don't know they're wonderful yet, but you will as soon as I introduce them. That's my cue, isn't it, John? Real yeah. quick, before we mentioned new members, I want to not give Bill Hershey uh, we mentioned him last time, I think, but we should certainly mention him now. Bill, thank you for joining IMC. Really glad to have you here. Uh, and on that note, uh, I'm going to push us forward to our first speaker, the shorter of the two talks today. It's our 10 minute talk, uh, sometimes known as the, uh, the innovation talk. Uh, and I, I managed to talk Joanne Siri uh, into being our innovation speaker, not for what she does, which is uh, advise people on business plans. And I might need to give Joanne a call, uh, but rather because of what she's about to do. She recently moved from Hawaii where she had a huge BNI practice. She ran a, one of the biggest business networking international uh, chapters or practices in, in Hawaii, left it all behind to go to South Carolina uh, and launch afresh uh, this new consulting gig but what really caught my eye about Joanne is she is working with Sophie Higgins, our second speaker on Joanne's first class. So she's just a few steps ahead of us, those of us who are thinking about this whole online class thing. Joanne, are you ready to talk to us about how you started this journey and what you've learned so far? I am ready. Joanne, I'm very excited. Away. Excellent, thank you. All right, well, I'm gonna share my screen and... Um, Definitely want to say, everyone, thank you for having me here today, because as Thomas had said, this is new. Um, I have gone through a year of transition, 
And I am very excited on the path that I'm headed. So I am going to share that with you. So first of all, um, have you ever felt like you want to clone yourself? Have you ever said to yourself, I just wish there was a way that I can duplicate myself. If I just had one more like me, I'd have it made. I'd be able to have that perfect balance, right? Where I can do my passion, work with the people that I want and still have a life. Well, that's really where I was at over the past couple of years and wanted to be able to really take the next step in my life and in my business. You know, we also, we often say this to our clients that we're working with, right? You need to duplicate. You need to put the system down, the process down. But personally, I had really not done that for myself. This is a picture of um, the reason why I'm passionate about helping entrepreneurs. This is a picture of my father who was a cobbler, a shoemaker. I, as a child on Saturday mornings, I would get up early and I would run out to his cobble shop, which was in the backyard. And I would help him run the cash register and greet the customers. He was really passionate and, and good at what he did but he was not a good business person. He just, you know, someone would come in and he would say, oh, just give me a dollar or, you know, um, you know, just, you know, don't worry about it. Or he would talk to people for hours on end, right? And not get the work done. He was just a very kind person, but there was always that sense of tension in my family. My mother would always say, hey, Joe, you need to get a job. And he was like, I have one, right? So I really feel that from a very young age, I wanted to help him, which grew into me wanting to help all business owners. Over my years, I personally feel that the business plan is the tool to do that, right? It's a document. It's words, it's, it's financial triggers, it's descriptions of who's doing what, of the operations. All those words put together, put a plan and financial triggers into place for the business to make informed decisions. If he had had that, he probably would have had a better business. But instead, he died at a young age, and I really feel it was the stress of trying to run even a small business like he had that, that did that. So how I started sharing what I was passionate about was in 1996, my husband and I started Serious Business Solutions, where our focus was writing business plans for businesses. Most of these businesses were looking for a loan or they were looking for investors or they were looking to franchise, open other locations and needed that document um, to get government contracting jobs and so on and so forth. But what I found was when they wrote that business plan, not only did they get the funding and the capital they needed, but they just were happier. They were able to run their business more efficiently. I had joined BNI Business Network International in Massachusetts as um, a business consultant, and BNI really helped me uh, take my business to the next level. In 2001, my husband wanted to move to Hawaii, and I said, Yes, let's do that. We sold our home, sold our business moved to Hawaii, started serious business solutions there. It was moving and growing. And then I got a call asking if I would want to help grow BNI by purchasing the franchises for BNI Hawaii, which I did. I did because I believed in it. I believed it was a great way to help businesses get business. So from 2003 on, I did both businesses. 
Serious Business Solutions honestly kind of took a back seat because I became very busy. We grew BNI from 60 members to over 500 members. And it was um, a really great way to help the community. And I'm very, very happy that I did it. And I loved the opportunity to, to do that. But over time, I became very frustrated. I was overwhelmed, especially during COVID. I had all these people trying to reach out, get help, and I really wasn't taking care of myself. I had not seen my family for over two years. I was working 12 hours a day. I wasn't really feeling like I was giving everything that I wanted to, to my customers and my clients. So I, I sold BNI in uh, November of 2021. So just a few months ago, um, we sold our house in Hawaii and we moved to South Carolina. So over the past few months, we had made all these decisions to make these changes and things fell into place. Um, during this period of time, right before I sold BNI, someone called me and said, you know, we had someone visit our chapter on Oahu. She develops online courses, but she lives on the big island. Could you help her find the perfect chapter? So I did. I called um, and it was Sophie that I was introduced to. And I told her that I would get back in touch with her over the next few months, knowing that I was going to sell BNI, but not wanted to share that with everyone. And when the sale finally happened, I contacted her and I told her, you know, I've always thought of this. I thought of being able to take everything that I was doing over those 25 years with writing the business plans and actually having a class online for people to do that. I wanted to be able to take the tools, the resources, the worksheets, the knowledge, all the information that I had that I used when I was writing business plans and be able to put it in a simple format for people to subscribe, business owners to subscribe, and actually in an eight week period of time, write their own business plan. I didn't know how to do it, but Sophie started step-by-step step giving me opportunities to put this information together. First, we discussed what the goal was going to be for each module, the why someone needed that, the what, what did that mean? And how were they gonna do that? So every week, step-by-step, step, we started developing the curriculum to make that happen. And this, I mean, eight weeks, I, I think we worked on it maybe two months. This is the, plan, the, the course uh, to write the perfect business plan in eight weeks and unlock your business success. So eight modules have been put together Every module has the resources, there will be videos, there's worksheets, and there's uh, the opportunity for anyone that wants to write their own business plan for a low cost to be able to take this and actually walk away at the end of the eight weeks with, with a business plan. So how does this share my, my passion? How is this able to really have me project that and, and move forward? Well, first of all, I can definitely reach more people. You know, from, uh, I don't have to work with someone just in my community of South Carolina. I, for my class that's starting this Thursday, I actually have students from Michigan, I have students from Hawaii, and I have, uh, students from um, South Carolina as well. So I'm able to reach people all over the world. 
um, as long as they speak English, but I'm sure there's a way in which to translate it to in the future. I can offer different levels of support. They can take the class themselves if they want to. They can take it live if they want to. They can have me review the plan if they want to. So there's different add-ons. You know, they can, um, we're gonna have a mastermind group where the students that have graduated can get together and we can discuss and really support each other and them really using that business plan and making changes to it and taking all those assumptions and making sure that they are true deliverables. There's recordings. They can go back and listen to it over and over again if they want to. They can learn at their own speed. And I think that's really, really important. I've had some people say to me, you know, well, do I have to wait eight weeks? Well, with the recordings, once they're all online, no, you can do it sooner if you want to. If you don't get it done in eight weeks, you can take 12 weeks, how long you need. And it will be there and all the resources will be there to help them. And it's cost effective. I don't have to run a room. I don't have to travel to put, put on the, the class in a certain area. It's really going to allow me to really duplicate myself and be able to continue to help business owners through this tool that I feel is very, very important. So the bottom line is thank you, Sophie. Um, you've cloned me. So I'm going to be able to continue to use this information, continue to do my passion. And it was a very, very simple process. So thank you. Thank you, Sophie, very much. And I'm sure that you will learn a lot of tips and tools that she taught me over the next half hour with Sophie. Super. Joanne, thank you so much for sharing with that with us. And do folks have any, uh, anybody have any questions? for uh for sophie or sorry for joanne before we move on to our next speaker uh i know you covered a lot so if folks do have questions this would be a great time for that and i'll count slowly to three <laughs> to see if anybody like, oh do i have a question gosh i'm not sure if i have a question or not oh, oh, yes. hi, this is vivek i have a question hey vivek yes yeah. so what's the similarity between bni versus amway Vivek, I'm going to invite you to talk to Joanne offline on that because it's an interesting question and I could answer it too. It's going to be off topic for the presentation. Okay, forgive so my, forgive my doing that. Just tell me about BNI then. What uh, does BNI do? Business Networking International. It's Joanne? The, the... Yeah. yeah, well, really quickly, it's a business referral organization. So the purpose is to pass qualified leads or referrals to each other. Um, you can do the same with this network. It's just structured differently, right? BNI is just, you know, getting to know each other and specifically for um, passing referrals. And if you go to BNI.com, Vivek, you'll, you'll be able to see the, uh, the online resources explaining that organization. Joanne, uh... Growing an organization from 60 to 500 people, pretty mm -hmm. impressive, uh, especially over multiple islands, it sounds like. So it wasn't all that easy. What are maybe three keys? And I, I ask because I have a trade association I'm executive director of mm -hmm. that's 60 years old and has been declining for the last decade. Mm -hmm. And my job, among other things, is to turn it around. Um, Slightly different, I know, but what are some, what are maybe three keys to growing BNI for you? Great question. Um, I feel that it is one, giving them what they need, um, you know, communicating very closely with your members, not necessarily making an assumption of um, what you feel they need, right? I mean, I know that. You know, BNI has a mission, trade organizations have a mission and a vision, but I frequently spoke with my members and said, how can I help you? And I think it was that support that really um, 
developed the tribe, right? That really got members to be able to um, to see the value of what mm -hmm. we could offer. So that would be number one. Number two, what would be to really um, keep it simple, but keep it informative. You know, um, offer updates frequently. You know, always add something a little new so that they want to come back. Um, you know, with BNI, a lot of it was technology. You know, we, we were able to, um, when COVID happened, go online and do Zoom. And it really kept our membership together, um, even though we did lose, lose some members. But they've got to see the value. You have to make it easy. And I feel you have to... Um, be open to them coming to you and communicating their needs. Okay. Thank you. And Paul, You're I welcome. want to encourage you to uh, pursue Joanne as a professional colleague and link with her on LinkedIn and ask her more questions because thank you for an outstanding question, Paul. Quality of the questions that help you tell you the quality of the consultant. Uh, I'm, I would normally say who else has a question, but we don't have time. Uh, I'm actually going to draw our attention now to our second speaker, uh, Sophie. And let me tell you a little bit about Sophie. She was a, uh, uh, a school a superintendent, uh, what we call superintendent. She was a CEO uh, of a school in Denmark uh, until I think only four years ago. And it was her love of Kenpo Karate that caused her to meet the person that she then moved to Hawaii to be with. Uh, and caused her to let go of her conventional training uh, and be the expert now on online training that she is today. Uh, what else, Sophie, should I tell people before you start your presentation? I think that's just fine. I, Good enough? I, I will uh, tell people a little bit more about my background uh, when I get a chance to do that. Okay. Well, in that case, uh, I say, Sophie, uh, the floor is yours. Please tell us about uh, scaling up with an online class from your perspective, please. Thank you so much. I will do that. And I'm so excited to be here. It's really a nice audience that you have gathered here today. And I just want to say to Joanne, I am so proud of the product you have created. It's just, uh, it's really taught me so much about how to get my own business organized and how to know what my break even point is and all these things that I've learned through working with Joanne and going through the course myself as we have developed the curriculum. So I will just go ahead and share my screen um, here. Yeah, so I'm very excited to be talking to you about one of my uh, key passions, which is learning and uh, how you can get started in actually generating revenue for your business and scaling your business and duplicating yourself like Joanne was talking about with an online class. And I just uh, put together some goals for this inside track so you can follow along and then we'll revisit it at the end of this uh, presentation and see if you have any questions uh, related to these different goals. But uh, the first thing I wanna touch on is why having an online course as part of your consulting business is a great idea. And also know a little bit more about why people buy courses and know the latest trends from the most effective course creators about courses that people want to buy. So you can learn the, uh, the trade from them. And also how you can get started creating your course immediately and know what the steps are to get there. Bottom line is that I just love learning. It's been the passion for my entire life. And I have uh, been uh, kind of working with that passion as an educator for 20 years. And the last four of those years in Denmark was as a high school principal. And then I've written five textbooks. And as you can see, they are all in Danish. 
and uh, it's all about how to teach people and how to improve learning outcomes in both writing and in art and also in curriculum development and teaching. I have three master's degrees, a master of art, a master of business, business administration, and a master of business coaching. I've been working as a webmaster, and then I am an internationally certified educational consultant, and I've been working as a or keynote speaker for years in Denmark first, where I helped uh, big organizations improve learning outcomes in general. And then I have uh, the experience of having had really the honor to help more than a thousand experts over the years develop their curriculum and teaching skills in all kinds of different subjects as a teacher trainer. And here over the past year, where I've really been focusing in on helping experts in the uh, United States and internationally uh, build their online courses. And as a little interesting, piece of information, my own course revenue has grown with 4,364% over the past five months. So I have some tips and insights that I can share related to that. The skills is really this thing about improving learning outcomes. It's been my passion from the very beginning of my career as a teacher, where I was just like, why don't they get it? I had to completely reconfigure the way I did uh, teaching and the way I approached uh, instructional design. And the whole point of that is to reverse engineer instruction. Like Joanne was talking about, what is the end goal? What are the steps to get there? Really break it down and also filter the amount of information given because as an expert, we have so much information and it's easy to overwhelm people with all that knowledge that we have. So choosing just the right amount is one of the things that's really important. Then I have my skills in writing and graphics and then making data informed decisions. That's again, one of my big, uh, in, in <laughs> Danish, you would say wooden horses. I don't know if you say that in English, but that's kind of something that I really emphasize because we want to make sure that the decisions we make are just not just flukes, but they're actually, uh, there is evidence behind why we wanna move in that direction. Then my, I have my experience in leadership and management and coaching. And then the last thing I wanna mention as my background to help people create online courses is that I'm curious and creative, uh, just to mention who my ideal, uh, kind of idols are, it's uh, Indiana Jones and Lara Croft, just to give you a, <laughs> kind of an image of that. Then I'm caring and meticulous. And again, I just love learning. What's so great about an online course? Well, you get to share your passion and then you get to share knowledge to help other people learn and grow. And then for your own business, it helps you grow your revenue. And I often get this question, well, how much can you make from having an online course? And honestly, you can make anywhere from between $500 to more than $100,000 by having an online course as part of your business offerings. It all depends on your audience and the audience reach that you have. And then the conversion rate, so how many people go from your audience into converting to buying your course and then what's the price point? So if you have an audience of a thousand people converting at 5% and a price point of 199, that would, would give you a revenue of $9,950. So why do people buy online courses? And here, I just wanna ask you to take a moment to think about the last course that you bought. What moved you to buy that course and also, let's see here, why did you pick this course over other courses? So if you wouldn't mind just uh, reflecting on that and then share uh, in the chat why you bought this course. It solved the need. admire the work of the person teaching the course. Yeah, thank you for that. Because the truth is that 
we're really in the life transformation business with online courses. And we are providing shortcuts to get from point A to point B better and faster. So taking people from their current reality, their point A where they might be confused, they don't quite know what to do next, they don't quite know how to do it, and then getting them to their desired future, their point B. And the next question uh, we're gonna focus on is why people buy online courses. And what does the data say about that? Well, first of all, online learning is the new normal. A survey done recently shows that 66% of Americans have been more motivated for online learning since the pandemic. And this graph from the course platform that I'm using where they've counted the change in student demand from 2019 to 2021, you can see the increase in student demand over the different areas. And uh, that's quite significant uh, how that has changed. And then there were also asking why people prefer online learning as, and the top three reasons was that it's more flexible, it's more accessible, and you can go at your own pace. There's also data that shows that more creators are finding success. So we have creators where students are on multiple continents. So the market for online learning is really global, as you can see, and growing. And this is just the data, again, from uh, Thinkific, the platform that I'm using. And then also, there's another thing that some people have been mentioning that, oh, you have to have at least 10,000 social media followers in order to launch a successful online course. And as you can see in this graph, it's actually not true. So the percentage of students attending courses by creators with under 10,000 social media followers is now uh, at 62%. So what are these trends from those top 20 course creators? What can we learn from them? And what is it that they do? And I would just encourage you to just think about it here for a minute and then also maybe to share uh, what it is that you think they are doing differently in the chat. What's the question exactly? So what are the most successful course creators? What are they doing differently? Those people who make the most money on their online courses. We're going to guess. You're going to make us guess. Make a wild guess and then right. I will share the four top trends with you. Got it. Yeah, there's some really, really good guesses out there. Thank you so much for sharing those insightful uh, guesses here. And you, several of you are really touching on some of those top trends here. One of the main trends is that learning is getting personal. So we see a shift away from just one-way communication towards more interaction and connection, like live sessions, Q&A and communities. So that opportunity to get some additional support, that's one of the things that people are looking for. And then there's the rise of multi-product learning. So top creators expand their offers with memberships, eBooks, physical products, one-to-one -one coaching, and that gives people multiple entry points to their business, which was exactly what Joanne was talking about, that people have the option of getting feedback on their business plans. And so those add-ons that you can create along with your uh, online offer is really a great idea. And this is just, again, an overview of those different things that top creators intend to sell in 2022. And you can see that it has a broad variety from physical products over digital downloads, courses, coaching, and so forth. So how to attract students to your course? That's another very important thing to uh, consider. And top creators, they take control of their data. So rather than relying on third-party platforms, and that's platforms like Facebook, the problem with those platforms is that once you 
put your course content out there, they own the content. So it's very difficult to take control of your data. And that's why I use and recommend Thinkific. Uh, and there are other platforms, of course, that has the same benefits as this one has. But what I really like about it is that I can track student engagement and collect feedback and reviews. And also, they don't own my content. They don't own Joanne's content. We own our own content, and we just pay a subscription fee to use the platform. And I, I really appreciate that. Because other platforms, they require that you pay part of your revenue to them. So that's just a good thing to know. And then the last of these trends is that we see an end of hard sell. So tap creators think more in free lessons, pre-orders, in-course upsells, monthly subscriptions, and all to kind of create this customer experience funnel rather than thinking just about a sales funnel. So it's, it's like thinking about how to uh, create that lead attraction uh, into and guiding them into your course. And this is how tap creators attract their students to their courses and the top one is social media traffic. So again, that's why it's really important to have a presence on social media and also to provide value to people on social media. The second one is list of leads. And that's where it's really important to start building out your email list because that's a way to, again, promote your offer to people who already know you and have connected with you. So they're more, more likely to uh, engage with you. Then there's word of mouth and paid advertising and uh, the other uh, trends here also. So again, capping up on what these top 20 of course creators do differently. These are some of the leading sales tactics they use as lead magnets. That it's these free courses that can be used to lead people into their paid courses. Live events like this, uh, free downloads, whatever we can use and provide value, which was also some of the things that Joanne was talking about. So now the big question of this uh, lesson here is how you can get started immediately to create your own course. And I have put together a, an eight week course to help you create your meaningful online course and grow your passive income. And it's basically taking you through the same steps that I've helped Joanne go through, uh, but in a different setting where I've helped Joanne uh, individually, the course is with group guidance uh, with this course. And then there's videos and resources and templates and swipe files and all the other things that you need in order to create your online course. And during these eight weeks of this course, uh, I take experts just like you through the process step-by-step step to help you create your own meaningful and profitable online course based on my own experience on, on, of what works, based on the experience I have working with other people, building their online courses, and also the best practices of the field. And one of the key things really is to know the end goal and know the steps to get there. It's just like driving with a GPS, because if you don't know where you're going, you end up going in circles. But when you plot in the, the destination, then you know where to go. And you can see on your map that there might be different directions to get there, but, but that's where you're heading. And then we can reverse engineer with the end goal, this point B in mind. And I just want to use my own course as an example, because it's all about this course transformation that we want to provide. And I know from my own experience and my own research that I've done that my ideal clients and my target audience, they want to have a meaningful and profitable online course at the end of working with me. And that's their point B and their desired future. Where they are at when they get in touch with me is that they know that they want to create a course, but they don't know quite how to go about it. So this is the really uh, just an overview of this uh, course transformation journey. And then there's the steps that go in between there. So again, in this course, uh, the first week is to get to know your course transformation. And that was why I was sharing my background, my experience, my skill, my passion, my talents, because that all goes into why you're the ideal guide. And that was also one of the comments in the chat 
because that you chose that particular course because you knew the person who was uh, presenting. So that's one of the things that's really important. The other thing is to know uh, what the audience burning desire is. So what is it that they want to be able to do differently after taking your course? And that's how you get to know your course transformation and also what is the ideal education topic that you want to choose for your course. And this is all part of the idea clarification. And then the next week is to create this irresistible offer and then test it with a keyword research, SEO and audience research. The next week is then to slice the audience. If you have more than one audience, you might wanna consider planning for more than one course to make it really specifically targeted to that particular audience and then set a competitor based pricing strategy. And then we move into the next phase, which is to develop the course outline, which is part of the content creation, and then to create this effective storyboard, which is like Joanne was talking about, why do we wanna have this information? What is it they need to know? How will they get to know it? And how can they apply it? And then we move into uh, creating and organizing the course into the learning management system. And that's part of this learning management system production. And then the uh, seventh week, we move into creating the effective sales copy for the launch to prepare for that. That's creating the sales page. It's creating uh, the email campaign to get ready for the launch. And then the last week is to do the test and then to get ready for relaunch. So that's the launch and customer experience funnel. And that's just an overview of the process of this online course. And how I differentiate from other course creators out there is my emphasis on testing and testing with a live course as the first course that you're launching. And the reason for this is actually several because one thing is that you, can save yourself some time. If nobody ends up signing up, you know that you don't have a good customer market fit and you have not spent a whole lot of time creating video content that's not being used. Instead, you can then refine and relaunch before you get to that point. But if you have a group of people who sign up for your course, you are then able to create your videos as you're presenting your first test run, you get questions and you get feedback from that group of people. So it's a really great way to make those adjustments that you might need to your course content. And then you can integrate that into your relaunch. So really think of it as a, a process, like an iterative process where you keep developing rather than thinking of one big launch and then done. So that's kind of my take on that. So live testing and relaunches, that's one of my, uh, again, my wooden horses to use the Danish expression for that. And the phases that you need to go through, again, it's just a recap. First, idea clarification. Then the next phase is the content creation. Then there's the learning management production, and then the launch and the relaunch. But most importantly, you get to do what you love and share what you love. And that's the fuel. That's what's going to take us through this. Um, and I know it works. It has worked for Joanne and all these people that I'm working with. And this is just uh, Joanne's kind uh, testimonial for me here. And I see that you put your video on there, Tom. Am I running out of time? <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I was ready uh, for when you, your slides are almost up. Uh, I had asked Joanne if she had her course handy and she could maybe share a screen uh, and show us what you helped her make, if it's ready, yeah. uh, or if there's anything else we wanted to show besides slides, like maybe your, your live website. Uh, I, I know you're making an offer here in the room, which you're totally allowed to do. No hard sells, of course, but you already said that that's out. So we don't. Absolutely. That's like <laughs> passe. We don't do that. Um, yeah. But I did find the URL. I think I got the right URL for Sophie's course. I'll put that in chat. Yeah, I will just, uh, I will just, if I can just uh, recap here. Before yeah, please, please. Into questions. I yep. appreciate that. Because yeah, take your time. Actually, I have created a special offer for you here. Uh, oh. While you're on this call, I want to give you a 20% discount on my course here uh, throughout April. 
and I've created a code you can use, and I just want to make sure that you can see it. Yeah, so if you use the coupon IMC now, then uh, it will automatically subtract, uh, subtract this 20% discount. And that's also the link uh, to the course with this coupon code on it. And I'm happy to share the slides with you after also, so you have that. Outstanding. And then there's just a last thing. I don't know if I have time to actually talk about this, but it's, as you saw in the presentation, mm -hmm. the main traffic comes from social media. So I just have a few tips and tricks for you if you want to invite your audience to relate to you as the trustworthy guide mm -hmm. and to consider where you find they can find you. Yeah, please. So let's see here. I'm having, yeah. So it's all about building your tribe. And the reason why it's so important to build your tribe and invite people to relate to you is to show them that you are the same, that you are like kind, because that's really how our brain works. We trust people that we think are similar to us. And that's why it's so important to post valuable content on social media on a consistent basis and also to connect with people on social media and to have these networking conversations like, that Joanne is all about <laughs> and to build your email list and to comment on people's posts and to use these SEO keywords to make sure that your content is something that many people are searching for. And then later when you start really generating revenue, you can use paid ads as well. And then you probably have all kinds of other ideas on how you can go about doing this. And basically, again, it's all about creating this know, like, and trust. Make sure that people get to know you so they can relate to you and get to like you and trust you. So let's just revisit the goals for uh, today's inside tracks and see if you actually feel like you've got these things covered that you now know why having an online course as part of your consulting business is a great idea. And also that you know why people buy online courses and you know the latest trends from the most successful course creators about people, the courses people want to buy. And then you know how do you can get started creating your course immediately and that you have an idea of what the steps are. And if you need help with your content, I actually also have a small course about how to write great copy that people love to read and another testimonial for that. And I also wanted to share a good offer on that one uh, where I've created a coupon that's IMC50 to get 50% off until the end of April. And that's for that small course. That's for that small course, yeah. And then I just want to ask, what's your key takeaway here? What have you learned that you didn't know before you went into this presentation, either from Joanne or myself? I'm writing my answer. <laughs> I'm not sure how to phrase it, so I'm taking my time to write my answer. I learned a lot. And also, you're welcome to share that as uh, we open it up for questions. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you very much, Sophie. And um, I'm sort of like letting that soak in. Um, I probably have to watch this recording a few times, but I do want to invite folks to uh, uh, ask the questions and either, either by chat, if that's more your style or just raise your hand, or I guess you could unmute yourself and start talking, uh, whatever, whatever feels right to you. I'd like to offer a comment. I really appreciate the concept of re reverse engineering the process. When you identify the learning outcomes, how do you get there? And I thought Sophie did a really nice job of explaining that. Uh, the GPS analogy was excellent as well. You have to know where you're going so you can get there. So that's one takeaway that I picked up on that was really important to me. Thank you. Marv, thank you. Thank you so much. I see we have some raising their oh. hand. Sorry, I uh, Bill. Bill Hershey's being polite and raising her hand. And 
someone was just decided to talk, which is cool, by the way. I love that. Um, <laughs> was that, was that, was that Shelly? Was yeah, that Shelly? Yes. Can you fortune, hear me? Fortune favors the bold, Shelly. Go for it. I'm sorry. I was Not on my phone. It didn't show the option to raise a hand. So I have a question. Um, I'm with a company called Summit, and we do consulting for scaling your business in the mighty middle between five and a hundred million dollars. And we've taken the uh, unique process, which is a 161 page workbook and put it online, you wow. know, and it's been a long project. And um, now I, we're already, you know, pretty far into it. We changed actual platforms just recently. And I just would like to hear about a little bit more marketing, you know, um, if you have any more add on tips or ideas, um, because it's more consulting, it's really pretty complex material. Uh, so I'll be quiet and let you talk. Thank you. Yeah, so if you could just maybe uh, clarify for me. So it's the marketing of this complex, complex content that you're asking for advice on. Is that correctly understood? Correct, correct. Okay. Yeah, so again, there's all these avenues to think about when you think about marketing your content. So one of the things that can help in that process is thinking about how you can break small pieces of it into something that you can offer for free or really cheap because it's a great way to get people in and engage with your content and then they can uh, sign up for more uh, and pay for that um, as they move along. So that's, that's one of the really important things to think about. And also, again, that thing about bundling. So within the platform that I'm working in, there's the option to bundle. So you can have these uh, free uh, lead magnets really and have people sign up for that. And if they like that, then they can go into some of your other offerings. And the other thing is to have the money back guarantee because again, you wanna have uh, customers who are happy with your product. And if they're not happy, you'd rather give them the money back than uh, having a, have so them go maybe, away rather than have them telling all their friends how miserable they are. So thank that's you. Some of the that's approaches, but really think about uh, sharing value. That's that's key, and also when you are on social media. Right, great questions, Shelley. Thank you for that, Bill Hershey. With your hand patiently up, you were eventually rewarded for your. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, so. I have actually two questions. I'm hesitant to double dip here. Somebody else has uh, something. Somebody throw up a hand and I'll just do one. Um, but I'll start with the first, which is um, I think relevant to most of us. You mentioned about other platforms having ownership license uh, to content that's posted on their platforms. Uh, so Facebook, I understand that makes sense. You know, I might have actually made a mistake. I posted some of my course content as unlisted videos on YouTube, um, just so I could share the link and, and have other folks that I'm potentially selling the course to like be able to see what I'm creating. Um, what are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on potentially cutting out pieces of the course as advertising promotion for the overall course using YouTube as a platform? I know some people use Vimeo instead, maybe that's why. Um, curious to hear your thoughts. Yeah, no, actually, uh, YouTube is great because they are owned by Google. And so <laughs> anything that's owned by Google helps you uh, create more um, organic searches. So if they see that your links from YouTube is embedded into your website, that just boosts your traffic. So that's another thing that's good to know. <laughs> I found Even that. if it's unlisted, is that right? Yeah, yeah. So because the... When Google is uh, crawl through your, the sites out there, they look for backlinks. And backlinks are also uh, links to other Google platforms that then they rate those higher. Uh, so that's really not a bad idea. And the okay. other thing, I do the same thing, like take snippets of my course content and post it on different platforms. And I have uh, both posted them on LinkedIn and then I have put, put it on YouTube. and integrated the YouTube into my blog, into my website, 
but also just have these little snippets out there uh, because it's a great way to, again, share value and let people know what you're doing and, and, and let them see that it's valuable content. Wonderful. Um, so if I may go for the second one here, is everybody okay with that? Do it. All right, thank you. So um, Sophie, it's interesting. I, this is maybe a little more particular to my situation, but there are folks out there who will actually pay you to create content for their platforms. And they'll pay you a nominal fee, like $300 for, or $500 for an hour of content. And you retain the license to do with it what you will, right? So I, I, I got a big contract to do this. So I have nine hours of content now. And um, first option, I'm considering just putting this out as like a pay from your heart pricing, pay, pay what you would like, you know, after doing these courses, um, feel free to make a contribution. And um, in, in exchange for, I would love to love your feedback. I'm curious to hear like in that initial piloting when you're not sure like what the market value is holding for this product. And, you know, I don't have a big audience right now anyway. Um, what are your thoughts on taking that initial step of you've had something created, you want to do some marketing testing, but you also want to monetize it as much as you can. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's a delicate balance you're touching on. One of the approaches you can choose is to invite a small group of people into going through it, giving your testimonials and your feedback. So kind of use it as a, a really a private pilot. Mm. Uh, and then there's the, the other option like uh, Joanne is doing right now where she has a group of people paying at a 50% discount to join the first run I've done the same uh, also previously. And that is a great way where people feel like they're making a real good bargain. And also they're part of the creation process with which a lot of people like that they're actually invited into giving feedback, asking questions. And then the other thing is that I experienced when you get those questions, that would be questions that my whole audience would have. And they are presenting that to me and I can then put those questions on a slide and integrate it into the video content. So other people that would watch it at a later time, they will get the same questions. So it's actually adding value uh, to the course as I see it. So that's two different options. Standing, and we'll give William another shot at the apple, another bite at the apple, as we say, uh, after uh, Jeff Oldman. Jeff, your hand is up. Yeah, so the discussion on intellectual property triggered something for me, just a piece of, of my experience here. I've done a lot of teaching as adjunct faculty for many years, and many universities and colleges have rather strict expectations on their owning the material that you develop in conjunction with them or teach through them. So if you ever do that kind of thing, be really, really careful about what kind of agreement you're signing as an adjunct, because as you have been saying, it's very important to protect your right to reuse the material and to maintain rights to your intellectual property. I have one uh, comment to that one, because I was talking to another client who had been teaching at university and he had put his lessons into an online course format. So it was like, 45 minutes lessons. And my feedback on that was, it's really not suitable for the online course audience as much as it is at the university level, because it's a different type of product that people out there are looking for. So you can still use the same basic ideas, but you wanna kind of cut it in a different way. So- yep. That's uh, absolutely correct. It's yeah. a different audience, different learning styles, a whole different mm -hmm. environment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just like it was being mentioned, the option for more interactivity and, and also um, some easy to follow steps that guide people through where they're heading. Beautiful. Thank you, Jeff, for the question. Thank you, Sophie, for your answers. And I want to invite um, uh, Joanne to... Uh, join you on stage and accept uh, a round of grateful applause, gratitude, appreciations, both by a text in the chat and a little hand waving on screen uh, from all of us. Yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, huzzah, huzzah, and thank you. Um, that was absolutely terrific. Thank you so much for your participation and all your thank you. chats and questions. Uh, we are at the end of our allotted time. Uh, so I'm going to end the recording here. We're going to stick around for another half hour at least and keep talking. So if you're watching the recording and thinking, oh, but they kept talking and I'm missing it, the answer is yes. And that's why you come live <laughs> to our shows uh, and, and take part uh, in person. And of course, you can chase after Joanne and Sophie on LinkedIn uh, and connect to them there. But for now, uh, John Anderson and um, uh, and, uh, and Justin Blaney and I say to you, thank you very much, everyone, for being a part of our program. And we'll be back in one month. <laughs>